Hey, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. A couple weeks ago, we made a video. We showed you how to flash your car with boot mode without removing your DME. Today, we're gonna take it a step further. The first thing we're gonna do is show you how to route your E-neck cable from the OBD2 all the way through your armrest, completely hidden. Then we'll show you how to flash your car using only your phone and the Wi-Fi agent. No laptop required. Let's talk about what you need to make this happen. First, you need the Wi-Fi agent. If you don't have one, check us out at keysmotorsports.com. We have them available and we have a link in the description. Next, you'll need your boot mode license and you'll need the app on your phone, whether it's Android or Apple. If you don't have your license, check us out again, keysmotorsports.com, we'll be happy to help you out. Power tools are not required, but you do need a 10 millimeter socket. Now, another thing that might be pretty obvious, you're going to need an E-neck cable. Now, an E-neck cable, if you're not familiar, is OBD2 on one side, and ethernet on the other side. Now, a lot of times when you get a cable, they're about five feet long or so, which isn't quite long enough. So I went online and I picked up an OBD2 extension. Again, OBD2 male and female, and it gives us about three extra feet to work with. The other thing I really like about this is it's significantly shorter than our e cable, so you shouldn't kick it. Next, you're going to need some zip ties and electrical tape, and last, you need a hanger. All right, we're all set, so let's get started. Now again, the goal for this is we wanna have this cable in the car at all times so we can do things like flashing on the fly and data logging. So what we're going to do now is we're gonna show you how to route your ENAT cable from the OBD2 and have the ethernet side come out your armrest. All right, take your hanger. I like to use just these cheap hangers you get from the dry cleaner and you just wanna gently untwist it, just straighten it out. All right, there we go, nice and straight. Then to protect your car against damage, wrap some electrical tape around the end. All right, so just like this, nothing fancy. We just wanna make sure that this isn't gonna poke anything or scratch anything. For this next part, it's best if you put your seat all the way back. Next, remove any excess Keys Motorsports decals from your armrest. In all seriousness, if you do have extra stuff, um, you, you may wanna move it. We're going to be lifting this up. So you might wanna do it with a trim tool. You might be able to get it with just your hands. But basically what you wanna do is just pull it up just like that. But if you get stuck, just get a trim tool or something in there. Here, I'll push it back in and show you. There you go, just like that. So now that you've done that, get your hanger ready because what we're going to do is we're going to feed it through this opening and then down out here. What you do now is take the end that has the electrical tape on it, just feed it straight down here, and then you'll see it come out the bottom. Now what you can do is take a piece of electrical tape and your ethernet cable. What I like to do is just let it hang down about eight or nine inches or so. Then what you can do is just tape it to the hanger um, you don't have to go crazy on this. It doesn't have to look pretty. I'm going to just make a really big tab right here so I can get it off easily. All right, once you've done that, you can slowly start to pull it up. And what's most likely going to happen is as you pull up, your ethernet cable is going to get snagged. So just open it up, pull it through, just like that. Once you've done that, you can undo your electrical tape, get the hanger out of the car before you poke a hole in your seat. All right, so this is what it looks like when it's through. Don't push this back in or anything yet because we want to make sure that the cable is going to be long enough. So take your 10 millimeter and remove those now. Once you've done that, just take this plastic, slide your hand in, and it'll fall right down. Now at this point, tuck in the E-neck cable under the trim here. Once you get to this next point, be very careful. This is your airbag. You never want to have any wires below it. You always want to route them up and around it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have this way up here to get it completely out of the way of the airbag. And to do that, what I'm going to do is first connect my OBD2 extension. Then I'm going to take the other end and I'm going to route it up and through here. Next, I'm going to get a zip tie. I'm going to go through this piece of metal right here. It's gonna be hard to see for a couple seconds. Loop it over my OBD2 extension. I'm just gonna loosely Hold that in place, and I'm gonna show you why in just a minute. Next, I'm going to take my OBD2 cable, and I'm going to route it through here, and down over here away from my airbag. Next, take your OBD2 cable. There's actually a little cutout right here. You can just put it through the cutout, line everything up, then take your OBD2 extension, plug it in, feed any excess wire back up this way. Then you can pop this lower trim back in place. Then you can pull any slack up through here. And this is the point in when you figure out how much slack you want here and how much slack you can take out. So this is pretty good for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it just in the middle. I'm just gonna press that back into place. Um, it's gonna pop it up a little bit in the middle, but for what we're doing, I am perfectly fine with that. Then what you do is you take the USB, you plug it right in here. You take the ethernet, you plug it right in there, just like that. 
Then you can put your stuff back, close it up. All right, back to here, what I like to do is just pull this tight and use that zip tie that we installed earlier. And this is going to make sure that everything is going to stay nice and snug and that the point where it's connected isn't gonna fall anywhere near the airbag. Once you've done that, you can wrap up the rest of the cable and zip tie that nice and secure. Then you can cut your zip ties and reinstall this piece of trim. And as you can see, this is very nice, neat, discreet, and low profile. Now we need to set up our phone for boot mode. What you wanna do first, if you have an iPhone, it's gonna be a little bit different for an Android. You go under settings, you go under general, then you go under about and name, and you want it to say boot mode. Then what you wanna do is go back and go under personal hotspot. Once you're here, enable it, and then set your Wi-Fi password to boot mode as well. For the name of your phone and your password, it has to be boot mode all in lowercase, so it's B-O-O-T-M-O-D-3. We have enabled our wireless hotspot, open the boot mode app, and sign in. Next, we're going to press the start stop button just one time. And again, while you're doing this, you need to have your seatbelt on, and it's highly advised to have a battery charger hooked up. Now, it can take up to 60 seconds for the Wi-Fi agent to fully connect, so don't worry if after five seconds it didn't connect. Now, if you are having trouble getting it to connect, sometimes when dealers do things like software updates, it kind of messes with the network a little bit. Just disconnect the battery for five minutes and you'll have no problem. All right, so you can see that ours says OBD connected, so we are connected, and it's going to ask us to update the agent. So the cool thing is you can update the agent wirelessly. As you can see, there's no red bars and we're up to date. Now that's something you're gonna have to do on your first time, but it's not something you have to do every time you get in your car. Hop on over to My Maps and I'm gonna show you how quick, easy, and fast it is to flash your car. All right, if we scroll down, I'm on version six right now, the stage 293 octane. I want to go to version seven. So I'm going to hit that, hit flash, press here to flash now, press flash again, and it's flashing. All right, we're at the stage where it's clearing all the codes and we have success. As always, turn off the car for about 20 seconds, turn it back on and you're ready to go. Now after flashing, if you have any issues, it might say drivetrain malfunction, it might say something with the fuel. Uh, what you could do is go back into your map and hit online recode. Now once you have this set up, one of the cool things you can do with the boot mode app is data logging, which we're gonna save for another video. If you are interested in boot mode or the Wi-Fi agent, see the links in the description and we'll be happy to help you out. As always, be sure to give us a like, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification, check us out at keysmotorsports.com for all of your BMW retrofit and performance needs and visit us at proautomotion.com for aesthetics, carbon fiber, and M4 conversions. Again, this is Brian, thanks so much for watching and have a great day.